What I want to do in this video is go over this nice little problem dealing with sensors in the sun. So the problem statement I have here is considered a temperature measurement that is made in the sun with radiation coming in at 250 BTU per hour per foot squared incident perpendicular to the length of the sensor. What will the sensor read? Assume that the sensor has an absorptivity and an emissivity equal to 0.8 and the sensor is cylindrical with a diameter of an eighth of inch and we're given this correlation for the convection coefficient. Be sure to consider the radiative losses as well. The ambient air temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So this problem is really all about setting up the energy balance. Once we have the energy balance, it's just math and we'll see that in a second. So let's, let's draw this situation out. So we have something we're assuming is a cylindrical cylinder. We're going to have some solar radiation coming in. This is coming in at 250 BTU per hour foot squared. And we have the ground and we have some ambient temperature, outdoor air temperature of 80 degrees F. So this is a thermal problem. So what is the first thing we're going to look at? We're going to look at what is our control volume. And for this case, we're talking about this cylindrical sensor here. Piece of metal, anything. But we're told that it's cylindrical and it's perpendicular to the solar radiation. So coming in like this. We don't know how long it is, but we know that it has some sort of total area that's perpendicular to the solar and perpendicular to the ground. So what are the different components of heat transfer that are going to be coming into this cylinder? Well, the easiest one probably right off the bat is we're going to likely lose some heat to convection. And we know that convection, we're given coefficient, the total area of the sensor, and whatever this temperature difference is. And it's going to be the temperature of the sensor. We're assuming it's out, so the sensor, the sensor is hotter than the ambient air. Okay. And this is in BTU per hour. Everything we're doing here is in power. We're not doing any consumption here. Now the other parts of this are all going to be radiation. So what we have coming in, we have solar radiation. And we already know what that is going to be related to. We also have radiation coming from the ground, ground, ground radiation. Okay. And then last but not least, this sensor is emitting in all directions, really. Q sensor emitting. So we really have our four components here. And now we can start to really do an energy balance on this control volume. So what are what is the energy balance? We have E dot in, E dot out. BTU per hour in, it's got to equal BTU per hour out. So we can start off by, start way over here. What's what's going in? Well, let's start with, with the solar. So solar going in, we have some irradiation we're going to call G. This here is G, G is equal to that. And we, we know that's coming in perpendicular to the length of the sensor. So this is a BTU per hour per foot square. Well, what is, what is the area that it's coming in? Well, it's going to be essentially one half the total area of the sensor. And so now all that's left is 
we know that we're only going to absorb so much of that. And we're given an absorptivity. And that's given in the problem. And again, we have absorptivity and an emissivity. They're constant. So if it's if that doesn't, you know, in a real surface, the absorptivity and emissivity could depend on the wavelength, what wavelength this is coming in, and what direction. But if it's if it's not, if it's independent of wavelength, we have a gray surface. And if it's independent direction, we have a diffuse surface. It makes problems a lot easier, if that's a good assumption. So this is from the sun. So we have from the sun coming in, and we also have from the ground. Now, we have radiation coming from the ground. A reasonable assumption would be at the ground temperature. It's also at 80 degrees. So what can we do for radiation from the ground? Well, we can calculate its black body radiation to start. This is Stefan Boltzmann constant, t to the fourth. And then we need a, a few more factors after that. Really, what's, what's the radiation emitted from here that's going to reach the sensor? Well, it's the fraction emitted from the ground that sees the sensor times the area of the ground. And you say, well, I don't know really either of those parameters. Well, good thing we have the reciprocity. Can't say it right. You know what I mean. We can essentially switch the viewpoint because this is equal to how much the sensor sees the ground times the area of the sensor. And we don't know the area of the sensor, but what we'll see here is that these areas of the sensors are going to all cancel out. And we know this to be 0 0.5, right? This sensor, half of it sees the ground, half of it sees the sun. That's what we're assuming. So this is the entire whole of what's coming in. So what does this equal? Well, this has got to equal radi radiation being emitted in all directions. So again, what's we'll start with black body radiation. Sigma T sensor to the fourth power. Oh, I forgot something over here. Obviously, this is black body. This also, again, we have some absorptivity. Now, over here, we have black body. Again, what is it? How much, what's the area being emitted? That's the total area of the sensor. There's no factor here. It emits in all directions. So we don't have an F here, just the whole area of the sensor. And some emissivity so that we're factoring this black body radiation down. So this is radiation from the sensor. Okay, one last component and that's convection and we have this here now this should have stated in the problem that this is a built-in unit formula I don't like that as a scientist you shouldn't either but this delta T needs to be in degrees F and this D was assumed to be in feet you didn't know that but now you do but we'll know all of this so what's H what is H convection what is this term well it's 0 0.027. What is the delta T? Well, the delta T is the sensor temperature minus the ambient. And we know it's in 1 eighth of an inch divided by 12 inches per foot. So you need a little conversion all to the 0 0.25 power. So this right here is H convection. H convection. Again, that's going in all directions of that sensor, everywhere, no factor, just area of the sensor. And so we have that term, that term, we need this term. So we have T, S, minus T, infinity. And voila, that's really the, the only real hard part of all of this. We've got this set up, and if you notice now, some things are going to simplify for us. The first thing is that, notice, all of these areas will cancel out. And so we're really doing uh, balance on heat flux and not 
the BTU per hour. We're doing BTU per hour per foot square is really what we're balancing. And we know pretty much everything in this equation except for our T sensor. That guy, that guy, and that guy. So let's go ahead and let's fill in some of these some of these values. So let's go ahead and I'm going to change colors for this. So we have 250 BTU per hour foot squared times one half times 0 0.8. That's what we've assumed for all of these absorptivities and emissivities. We're just, just making this kind of grand assumption. Switch colors. Um, I'm not going to write Stefan Boltzmann constant, but that's an important constant to note. And what's important now for all these radiation parameters, we should be in ranking. So what is ranking? A ranking is Fahrenheit plus 460-ish. That gives you ranking. All these radiation terms to the fourth, might as well just go ahead and deal in ranking terms because this is absolute temperature and that's what's important. It's the absolute temperature to the fourth. Makes a big difference whether this is going to be, we have 80 plus 460 is 540, whether it's 540 to the fourth or 80 to the fourth makes a big difference. 540 Rankine to the fourth. And we're going to use this right here. Well, we know that that was the view factor was 0 0.5. And we have a emissivity here, 0 0.8. All right, that side's done. We'll move on to this. Again, I don't want to write sigma down. I don't have it memorized at the moment. Well, we have TS in ranking to the fourth, 0 0.08. And now we have this term plus 0 0.27. And notice here we have this to the first power, this to the 0.25 power. So what we can do is we can really make this one thing. So we can go TS, but I'll keep it separate for now. But this could be to the one. 0.25 power, but we'll keep that separate. Oh, this here is 540 Rankin all over. Nathan and inch divided by 12. We'll just we'll just leave it as that times 112. All right. So this is the final equation. We just need to solve for this variable. And you'll notice that it's not entirely that easy to solve. We don't have a explicit solution because this is to the fourth power. This, don't, don't want to forget this. This is really to a 1.25 power. And so we don't really have a nice explicit solution. But what we can do is we can go to a computer program. We can get a value here, some value. And we can basically loop. We can say, all right, I know my range of temperature. I'm going to start for TS is equal to 540 ranking to 600 ranking. I can calculate this side and I see what it, I see what it gets another value and when value two and when these two are equivalent, you look at what this was and that solves your equation. If you do that, you'll get something close to uh, 108 on the order of 108 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that's a pretty interesting result, especially considering that when we started, we're taking a measurement and ambient air at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're saying that, wow, this, well, this is a pretty high value for solar radiation. 250 BTU per hour per foot square. That's a very sunny day and it's fully exposed really. But it's still a significant jump. We went up plus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So the takeaway from this is if you're going to do some building measurements and you're out in the sun, your, your value, what you read, may not be the actual ambient temperature because of this significant radiation factor.